In this video, uh, which I've titled Finding a Particular Solution to an Initial Value Problem, or IVP for short, um, I have a couple of examples of initial value problems. Now, initial value problems consist of a differential equation and some initial conditions um, on the solution that you're looking for, the solution function. Uh, so in these examples, uh, we'll be given a family of solutions to some differential equation. Uh, this family will have some either one parameter or two parameters, right? Some unknown constants in them, called parameters. And we'll be given initial conditions, and then using those initial conditions to help me find the value of those parameters. Right? Find the value of the constants. And then we'll talk about the you know the in largest interval over which those solutions are defined. All right. So in my first example, I'm told that you know y equals one over x squared plus c, where c is a constant. All right, is a one-parameter family. Again, where that one parameter is this constant here, this unknown constant c. So this is a one-parameter family of solutions of the first-order differential equation y prime plus 2 times x times y squared equals 0. All right, so this means that if I took y here, replace if I replace c with any number, if I replace c with any constant, 0, 1, 5, a million, uh, this this function will satisfy this differential equation. All right, but we're not looking for an entire family. What I want to find is a solution. All right, find a solution of the first order initial value problem, all right, IVP, consisting of this differential equation, all right, the y prime plus 2xy squared equals 0, and this initial condition. So I'm looking for a member of this family that satisfies this condition. So the value of y when you know x is the independent variable here. So the value of y when x is 2 is 1 third. And then after I have found this particular member of this family, you know that satisfies this condition, then I'm going to state the largest interval called i, I'll call it i over which the solution that I found from this family is defined. All right, so when I'm given this condition, you know, y of 2 equals 1 third, you know, y of 2 would look like this. That's just taking my y here, replacing x with 2. So 1 over, you know, 2 squared plus some constant equals 1 third and then I'm solving for the constant. Right, I'm trying to find a, a particular member of this family that you know that satisfies this equation and this condition. Well, this should be easy enough. This is one over you know four plus c equals one third. Uh, that would imply that four plus c must be equal to three, right? Since these are fractions with the same numerator, they must have the same denominator if they're going to be equal. So this implies that 4 plus c must equal 3, subtracting 4. The value of c necessary here is negative 1. All right, so the particular solution I'm looking for is this. It would be a y equals 1 over x squared plus c where c is negative 1, so that's 1 over x squared, you know, minus 1. Right. Now, we can check that this is a solution if you want. You shouldn't have to, right? It was told to me that this, this is a family of solutions, so any value of c should, set, when I plug it in, uh, this function should satisfy this, but I'll just double check real quick here. 
Um, so this is, you know, you can think of this as 1 over x squared minus 1 or x squared minus 1 to the negative first power. That might make it easier to do derivatives, right? y prime would just be negative and then x squared minus 1 to the negative second. But then chain rule, right, times 2x. So this is negative 2x over, you know, x squared minus 1 squared, right? That's y prime. And then plugging this stuff in, hopefully you can see that when I plug this in here, and then plus, you know, 2x times y squared would give me positive 2x over x squared minus 1 squared, and then they'd cancel, you'd get 0, right? So this is a good solution to this differential equation. And it satisfies the condition, right? When I plug in 2 for x, I get y is 1 third. All right. Now the last part of this question is, you know, give the largest interval called i over which the solution is defined. All right, so let's think about this. Uh, let's think about the intervals where, you know, y equals 1 over x squared minus 1 is defined. Well, I know that it's undefined. It's, hopefully it's obvious to you. Remember, anything's undefined where it's, you know, when you, whenever you're dividing by zero, it's uh, one place where you're undefined. I know that this, I know that this function is undefined at x equals, you know, plus or minus one, right? If you put in positive one, you're dividing by zero. You put in negative one squared minus one, you're dividing by zero. So you got these intervals here. So one of them would be from negative infinity to negative one, right? But not including negative one. That's one interval. Uh, another interval over, over which this would be defined would be from negative one to positive one, right? But again, not including either one of them. Or another interval over which this is defined is from positive one to infinity, right? Now you got to be, you got to think though. Remember our initial condition. involved y of 2, right, it was y of 2 equals 1 third. So I need the interval here that has x equals 2 in it, all right. So we need the interval with uh, x equals 2 in it. And that would be this interval right here. Right. So here's the, here's the interval i, all right. There's the largest interval over which this solution is defined, and also you know satisfies this condition. All right, this interval doesn't contain two. This interval doesn't contain two, so I, I wouldn't use those. All right, I hope that makes sense. All right, so there's the particular solution y equals one over x squared minus one, and here's the largest interval over which that solution is defined, and you know you're 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 also including the initial condition. Great. All right, so that was an example of uh, where I had a one parameter family. I was only asked to find you know one constant uh, for for you know a one parameter family of solutions to a differential equation. Uh, in my last example, I only got two. I'm going to look at a two parameter family. Right. So there's two. There are two unknown constants, and there should therefore then be two initial conditions to help you figure out what those two constants are. All right, so this time, x is the dependent variable, and the independent variable is t. Okay, so when you see x double prime, that's the second derivative of x with respect to t. All right, and this is x of t. Right, so x is the dependent variable, t is the independent variable. All right, so x equals you know c one constant one times the cosine of t plus c2, or constant 2, times the sine of t is a, you know, two-parameter family of solutions to this second-order differential equation, x double prime plus x equals 0. So the two-parameter family means, you know, there's two values that you can replace anything, you know, with any constant. There's c1 and c2. So if I replaced c1 with 10 and c2 with negative 5, you'd have a, a solution of this equation. If I replaced C1 with 15 and C2 with a million, 
you'd get another equation, a uh, solution to this equation, this differential equation. So you could replace C1 and C2 with any numbers. But what I'm trying to find, though, is one particular one. You know, uh, find a value of C1 and a value of C2 so that these initial conditions are also satisfied. Right, that the value of x at t equals 0 is 1, and the value of x prime, right, so we're, we're going to need to take the derivative of this, the value of x prime at t equals 0 is 8. Alright, so I know x, I need to know x prime as well then, and this is with respect to t, right, the independent variable is t. So if x is, you know, c1 times the cosine of t plus c2 times the sine of t, x prime would be, you know, negative c1 times the sine of t plus c2 times the cosine of t. All right, and I'm going to use both of these and these initial conditions right, to help me find the values of c1 and c2. All right, so the first one, I'll use the first condition, you know, x0 x of 0 is 1. All right, so what is x of 0? Well, that would be c1 times the cosine of 0 plus c2 times the sine of 0. Uh, that's got to be equal to 1, according to that condition. Now, hopefully you remember your trigonometry. The cosine of 0, and these are radians, right? cosine of 0 was 1. So this is c1 plus, and then the sine of 0 was 0. So there, I got the value of c1. Hooray. But it's a two-parameter family, right? I need, I need the value of both constants, c1 and c2. So I know the value of c1. Fantastic. And then the other condition was that, you know, the value of x prime at 0, right? The value of x prime at 0 needs to be 8. Right, and I have x prime here, and we know that c1 is 1, so I don't need to write c1 anymore. I can just write the number 1, or just you know not write anything at all, because it's just the number 1. All right, so what is x prime at t equals 0? Well, that'd be negative 1, right, negative c1 times the sine of 0, plus, and then I don't know c2 yet, so there's still c2 there, times the cosine of 0, and this needs to be equal to 8, right? And as I mentioned earlier, right, the sine of 0 is 0, so this first term disappears. The cosine of 0 is 1, so we have just C2 needs to be equal to 8. And there you go. Now I'll have that particular solution I'm looking for, just plugging in 1 for C1 and 8 for C2. Right? So the particular solution from this family that satisfies these conditions is the following. So x of t, or x, right, x of t, x equals you know, 1 times the cosine of t, right, replacing c1 with 1, uh, plus 8 times the sine of t, right, replacing c2 with 8. So this, this particular solution satisfies the differential equation and both of these conditions. The value of this at t equals 0 is 1, and the value of the derivative of this at t equals 0 would be 8. And since these are sines and cosines, uh, you know, the largest interval over which this is defined and, and, and contain, you know, satisfied, and the condition is mentioned, you know, x equal, uh, t equals 0 is in there, would be all real numbers, but we weren't asked about that because, you know, it's cosines and sines, they're defined everywhere. And you can always double check, you know, just take this and go down to the second derivative, plug them into the equation, and you'll see that it does satisfy this differential equation. Great. So again, hopefully not too bad. You, know, you come across other problems similar to this, hopefully you won't have a hard time. You just have to remember how to take derivatives, you know, remember your calculus, and then you're plugging in values based on what's in the initial conditions, and solving for the parameters, right? solving for those unknown constants. Great. And hopefully these problems help you, again, when you're looking at problems similar to these. And um, thank you very much for watching.